This morning, there is RCA payload specialist Robert Sinker making his first flight, and pilot Charles Bolden also making his first flight into space. And mission specialist George Pinky Nelson making his second trip, and Commander Robert Hootson also making his second trip into space this morning. And also making a second trip would be Stephen Hawley, mission specialist for this flight. And there is another mission specialist, Franklin Dang Diaz. This is his first flight. And uh, our payload specialist, U.S. Congressman Bill Nelson. This is the flight crew's fifth time for breakfast here at Kennedy Space Center, anticipating a launch of Mission 61C. Crew is scheduled to arrive at launch pad 39A at about 4.05 this morning, in about an hour from now. After their breakfast, they'll have a weather briefing, don flight clothing and equipment, and depart for the launch pad about 4.05 and start entering into Columbia's crew cockpit at about 4.40 this morning. The ice debris inspection team is making their final inspections at launch pad 39A, and the closeout crew is continuing to prepare Columbia's crew cockpit for the crew's arrival. Everything going smoothly at this time in the countdown. We anticipate a on time liftoff of the shuttle at 6.55 a.m. this morning. Weather conditions are favorable for a launch this morning here at Kennedy Space Center and also at the TAL site in Marone, Spain. At T minus three hours and holding, this is shuttle launch control. This is shuttle launch control at T-minus three hours and holding. Right now, members of the ice debris inspection team are completing their task at launch pad 39A. They are now at the zero level of the mobile launcher platform. Here they are inspecting the tanks aft dome and the shuttle's main engines. This ice debris inspection team is made up of about seven members. It's led by KSE's Charlie Stevenson, and they have uh, also engineers from several NASA field centers and contractor organizations. The team has two jobs. One is to make a final check for any debris on the launch pad to blow around at launch and hit the shuttle. Their other job is to survey the external tank and the points where it connects to the orbiter and see if there are any indications of debonded thermal insulation on the tank or excessive ice or frost buildup which might break off during launch and hit Columbia's fragile tile system. The crew is scheduled to be completed with their inspections about the time we come out of this hold, which would be about 30 minutes from now.
After they are completed with their inspections, they will come back to the launch control center and report to shuttle managers what they saw. Everything is continuing to go smoothly in this countdown for mission 61C. T minus three hours and holding. This is shuttle launch control. Three hours and holding. Members of the ice debris inspection team are attempting to knock an icicle off the end of the the uh, gaseous oxygen duct. They are on the the arm there. The icicle is not visible to us, but they are attempting to knock it off. Concern is that maybe the ice would break off during launch and maybe hit the shuttle's tiles. The tile system is very fragile. 38 minutes and counting. Crew has just been briefed on the weather at Kennedy Space Center and the Transatlantic abort site. For KSC, they are forecasting at launch time for the weather to to be very good for liftoff. At the 2,500 foot level and up to the 25,000 foot level, there are predicted to be scattered clouds, and we should have seven miles of visibility in the area. The winds are expected to be coming out of the north at 10 knots. And at Edwards Air Force Base, we are expecting at mid, at the mid and high levels, the clouds will be scattered. We're expecting seven miles of visibility and higher. At the transatlantic abort sites, the car is still has haze and low visibility. And uh, there is not expected to be any improvement in the next couple of hours uh, in that tail site. And Marone in Spain is looking good for a transatlantic abort site. Scattered clouds are predicted at the 2,000 to 25,000 foot level. We should have an excess of seven miles of visibility. Winds would be coming at uh, six knots out of the east, northeast. Yep. There are, currently there is a little bit of fog in the area, however they are expecting that to burn off at the tail time. The flight crew is scheduled to be departing the operations and checkout building in, in Route 4, Pad 39A in about five minutes from now. We're now just about three hours away from the opening of today's launch window. That window opens at 6.55 a.m. And closes at 9.33 a.m.
We do have two colas this morning, and they are from 728 colon 25 to 730 colon 40. And the second cola begins at 908 colon 05 to 910 colon 20 this morning. Those are in Eastern Standard Time. The external tank is now in a stable replenish mode, and it will be until just right before liftoff when the drain back is initiated and pressurization of the tank takes place. Processing of the Space Shuttle Columbia by the KSC Shuttle Processing Team has been successful to ready the orbiter for liftoff. Columbia was towed from the orbiter processing facility to the vehicle assembly building on November 22nd last year and was mated to its solid rocket boosters and external tank. The hitchhiker payload was installed in the OPS on October 22nd and the 13 getaway special canisters and their gas beam were installed in Columbia also while in the orbiter processing facility. On December 2nd, the 61C vehicle stack was rolled out to the VAB to launch pad 39A. The RCA communication satellite and the material science laboratory 2 were installed in Columbia's 60-foot long payload bay at the pad on December 3rd. A terminal countdown demonstration test was successfully conducted with the astronaut crew members on December 4th. Everything continued to go smoothly in the countdown this morning. At T minus 2 hours 34 minutes, 23 seconds and counting, this is Shuttle Launch Control. Shuttle launch control and the 61C flight crew is now leaving their crew quarters. There's mission payload specialist Bill Nelson. Commander Hoot Gibson is already in the elevator. Mission specialist Chang Diaz. Payload specialist Robert Sinker and pilot Charles Bolden. Here's mission specialist Stephen Hawley. Mission specialist George Pinky Nelson. All now getting into the elevator on the third floor of the operations and checkout building. The astronaut support personnel are verifying at this time that the checklist for the crew's entry is now ready at launch pad 39A. And there we see some well wishers for the crew members here in the hallway of the Operations and Checkout Building. There's Commander Robert Gibson. Mission Specialist Pinky Nelson. And there's Stephen Hawley. Pilot Charles Bolden. Bill Nelson. All the astronauts are now aboard their astronaut van and will be departing shortly now for launch pad 39A and preparing to board the orbiter, orbiter Columbia. And the van is now on their way, led by KSC Security and also followed by the security. Everything going smoothly in the countdown. We anticipate an on-time liftoff at 6.55 a.m. this morning. T minus two hours, 26 minutes, 41 seconds, and counting, this is shuttle launch control.
coordinates in county, all continuing to go very smoothly in this morning's countdown leading up to the launch of uh, Mission 61C. Uh, the flight crew has arrived at the base of the pad at uh, launch pad 39A and should shortly be on their way up to the uh, 195 foot level where the orbiter access arm is. In the uh, white room, the, uh, the closeout crew, the white room closeout crew that will be assisting them has been busy for some time now. Aboard Orbiter Columbia is uh, astronaut support person uh, Bill Shepard. Astronaut Shepard is uh, beginning to configure the uh, Columbia's cockpit switches for the crew's arrival. Uh, actually, he's been uh, doing that for some time now. And when the crew arrives, he'll be assisting them into their uh, positions on the uh, both the flight deck and the mid deck. Crew's been uh, dropped off at the launch pad and have made their way up to the uh, crew, crew access arm, the orbiter access arm. The Astro van has left, and uh, shortly the first of the 61C crew should be arriving in the white room. This is the uh, 61C's fifth crew to the. Uh, Crew's fifth trip to the uh, white room at the launch pad for uh, boarding Columbia uh, on a launch morning. All indications this morning are that uh, we will get this mission off today. Our weather conditions are very good. Columbia bathed in spotlights at pad 39A as all preparations continue to go very well. The external tanks uh, loaded with its flight load of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Uh, replenishment of uh, those quantities of those uh, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen propellants that burn off is uh, continuing on a on a constant basis and will up until the final few minutes of uh, the, this launch countdown. Flight crew just waiting for the white room uh, closeout folks to uh, be ready for them to come in. Among some of the cockpit configurations that uh, astronaut Shepard uh, has been uh, doing, he has uh, thrown some switches to uh, ensure that the uh, cockpit controls are properly set for Orbiter Columbia's electricity producing fuel cells to take on onboard cryogenic reactants when ground supplies are terminated. Uh, he's also uh, acted to make sure that uh, there's no inadvertent firing of the forward and aft reaction control system uh, engines while the crew is climbing into the vehicle. Orbiter navigation aids uh, have also been activated at this time. Lockheed Test Director Jim Toe uh, has verified with members of the launch team that there are no violations of launch commit criteria. I see uh, astronaut Franklin Chang Diaz exchanging some greetings with the uh, White Room crew. And we have four strikes up there over the orbiter access door for the four launch tries that we've uh, had so far. And then uh, a good luck shamrock off to the right. And in, it, it, it appears uh, thus far that today will be our lucky day.
Commander Robert Hoot Gibson getting into his uh, egress harness. And uh, Pilot Charles Bolden as well getting into his egress harness at this time. This, uh, this ingress activity, one in which the crews become quite proficient at, especially over the last week. Commander Gibson became an astronaut for NASA in 1978. He graduated from California Polytechnic State University with a BS degree in aeronautical engineering and entered active duty with the Navy in 1969, completing advanced flight training at the Naval Air Station at Kingsville, Texas. Commander Gibson has flown more than 3,000 hours in 35 types of civil and military aircraft and holds commercial pilot, multi-engine, and instrument ratings. Commander Gibson has completed over 300 carrier landings. He'll be making his second trip into space with uh, Mission 61C. He was the pilot on Space Shuttle Mission 41 in 1984. He spent a total of uh, 191 hours in space. Being assisted with his launch and entry helmet now, Commander uh, Gibson will be entering the orbiter Columbia shortly. Pilot Bolden is a lieutenant colonel in the United States Marine Corps. He became a NASA astronaut in May of 1980. His educational background is that he received a, a BS degree in electrical science from the U.S. Naval Academy and an MS in uh, systems management from the University of Southern California. He has more than 3,400 hours of flying time, 3,100 hours in jet aircraft. Bolden's NASA assignments thus far have included systems development group work on tile repair, SRB launch overpressure problems, launch debris prevention, and shuttle auto land development. He's also served as astronaut office liaison for STS displays and controls astronaut office safety officer and technical assistant to the director of flight crew operations. White room crew, uh, take five. Little <laughs> systems or pad systems at this time. The port we have, uh, has been that the uh, weather here at KSC is going to be very good. Looking for uh, some scattered uh, low clouds at 2,500 feet, scattered at 25,000. Visibility is uh, better than seven miles. Uh, winds out of the uh, north, uh, northerly at uh, 10 knots. Peak winds are at about uh, 40,000 feet at about 105 knots. Payload Specialist uh, Robert Sinker, uh, representing RCA, is in the process now of getting his uh, launch and entry helmet on. Sinker received a BS and MS degrees in aerospace engineering from Pennsylvania State University and a Master's of Science degree in electrical engineering from Rutgers. He's a senior staff engineer at RCA Astroelectronics Division, East Windsor. Most of his career has uh, been devoted to design and development of communication satellites, including the RCA SATCOMs 1 and 2, the GTE SpaceNet uh, satellites, and the Advanced Series 4000 spacecraft. RCA SATCOM KU Band 1 will be deployed during this mission, 61C, and Sinker will perform experiments with an infrared camera. Payload Specialist uh, Bill Nelson is, of course, uh, very familiar to us here at the Space Coast. He's our United States Congressman representing the 11th District of Florida. Nelson comes from a pioneer Florida family. In his uh, responsibilities as a United States representative, he serves as chairman of the Space Science and Application Subcommittee and is a member of the Banking, Finance, and Urban Affairs Committee. Nelson received his Bachelor of Arts degree from Yale University and a degree in law from the University of Virginia. A U.S. Army captain, he served in the reserves from 1965 to 1971. 
141, and was on active duty from 1968 to 1970. Yes, copy that. Payload specialist Sinker already aboard Orbiter Columbia on the mid deck. Uh, payload Nelson, uh, payload specialist Nelson will be joining him shortly. And, uh, to be helping the crew with a number of experiments on this flight. Right. We have a no-by clock for uh, step 402. Oh, I didn't realize they Yeah, you have to go. Copy. Gibson and Pilot Bolden uh, should be uh, getting into their seats on the forward flight deck at this time. And being hooked up to Com Gear and emergency uh, air supply. Sequencer program has been started in the integration console here in the firing room. Engineers are setting the specific tables in the launch processing system that the launch sequencer will use as its guidelines to either let the countdown continue or to call an automatic hold when it assumes control of the countdown at the T minus nine minute mark. There are literally hundreds of parameters checked by the ground launch sequencer during those final nine minutes. They include uh, pressures and temperatures, uh, uh, readings such as that, to uh, verify that the condition, okay, the condition of the vehicle is go for launch. Payload specialist uh, Nelson now entering uh, Orbiter Columbia. Egress harnesses the astronauts' wear serve a variety of purposes. Primarily, it's part of the emergency egress system used to help the crew out of the vehicle if that becomes necessary. A device which connects to the harness allows an astronaut to get out of the vehicle through either the side hatch or through the overhead escape panel. There's a descent device that allows the crew members to uh, lower themselves to the ground at a controlled rate of descent. That harness also contains a life vest, which would provide 24 hours of flotation capability for the astronaut if they should have to ditch the orbiter over water. Astronaut uh, Mission Specialist George Pinky Nelson putting on that egress harness at this time. He's also a shuttle veteran. He was a uh, mission specialist on STS-41C in April of 1984. During that flight, the uh, shuttle crew deployed the long-duration exposure facility and uh, also retrieved and repaired the Alien Solar Max satellite. They then placed it back into <laughs> orbit. <laughs> That uh, looks like Steve Hawley uh, that's arrived in the white room. He's wearing a Groucho Marx disguise. <laughs> Nelson, uh, Nelson logged 168 hours in space on that 41C mission and included nine hours of... Uh, extravehicular activity flight time. Okay, 
Pinky Nelson received his Bachelor of Science degree in physics from Harvey Mudd College and an MS and PhD in astronomy from the University of Washington. He performed various astronomical research projects and uh, a postdoctoral research, he was a postdoctoral research associate at the Joint Institute for Laboratory Astrophysics in Boulder, Colorado. flight crew continuing to go through their ingress ritual performed uh, four times previously number five today everybody uh, feeling very good and confident that uh, this will be the uh, last time they need to go through this exercise before they uh, find themselves in space on mission 61c Uh, mission specialist, uh, not Groucho Marx, Steve Hawley, looking a little like Groucho Marx this morning. Nelson, Franklin Chang, and uh, Steve Hawley, still in the white room, waiting for the other members of the crew that are already aboard Orbiter Columbia to get situated before they take their turns to enter the ship. with any problem. Communications checks uh, in progress at this time between Commander Gibson, Pilot Bolin, and the uh, Lockheed Test Director and Orbiter Test Conductor here in the firing room. Lockheed Test Director Jim Toe and Orbiter Test Conductor Don Weinberg exchanging good morning greetings with the crew. Like uh, Mission Specialist Nelson, uh, Pinky Nelson, about to enter the orbiter and take his place up on the flight deck. He'll take a seat uh, almost directly behind the pilot, Charles Bolin. Mission Specialist Steve Hawley has deployed his Groucho Marx disguise and is in the process now of uh, getting into his uh, egress harness and uh, into the little bit more serious business of being readied for entry into the orbiter Columbia.
crew in a very jovial mood this morning as they have uh, made their fifth trip out to the launch pad to board Columbia. Undoubtedly saw stars in the sky on their way out to the pad. Uh, know the weather is very good here at Kennedy. Looking good overseas as well. And uh, with no technical problems at this time, certainly I have every reason to be uh, confident that uh, they'll get this uh, mission off the ground today. Between and just behind the commander and the pilot, He'll be serving in the capacity of flight engineer on this mission, uh, serving as a third set of eyes on Orbiter Columbia's cockpit controls and uh, assisting the commander and pilot with their ascent checklist. He became a NASA astronaut in 1978 and is the third member of this crew that uh, has had previous spaceflight experience. Holly received the B.A. degrees in physics and astronomy from the University of Kansas and a Ph. degree in astronomy and astrophysics from the University of California. Holly was a mission specialist on STS-41D in 1984 completing 96 Earth orbits and logging 144 hours in space. He served as a simulator pilot for software checkout at the Shuttle Avionics Integration Laboratory before STS-1 and as a member of the astronaut support crews for the second, third, and fourth shuttle flights. Once again shaking hands with members of the White Room closeout crew and his fellow uh, astronaut Franklin Chang Diaz. Holly uh, making his way into Orbiter Columbia at this time. Only uh, Franklin Chang Diaz remains to board Orbiter Columbia. As uh, voice communications checks between the crew and uh, firing room personnel continue. Franklin Chang Diaz is a mission specialist with NASA. He was uh, he was born in San Jose, Costa Rica, graduating from Colegio de La Salle in San Jose in 1967. He received a BS degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Connecticut and a PhD in applied plasma physics from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in 1977. In addition to his mainline fields of science and engineering, Franklin Chang has, a, has an impressive background in community service, having worked for two and a half years as a house manager in an experimental community residence for deinstitutionalizing chronic mental patients. He's also been heavily involved as an instructor and an advisor with a rehabilitation program for Hispanic drug abusers in Massachusetts. He joined NASA in uh, 1980 as an astronaut. And he'll be making his first trip into space on this mission. At the Bill Shepard is in this morning, that of astronaut support person uh, aboard the orbiter before the arrival of the flight crew uh, uh, getting ready for uh, their entry into the orbiter. After uh, Franklin Chang is aboard and in, uh, in his station, astronaut Shepard will be departing the uh, cockpit, removing equipment that's no longer necessary and the White Room crew will begin the process of removing platforms, access platforms, and uh, get prepared to close Orbiter Columbia's hatch. Radio 
Mission Specialist uh, Franklin Chang exchanging uh, greetings with the White Room crew. Good Orbiter Columbia with everything going well. We'll uh, recap the weather over Florida at this time. The uh, cloudiness that we had the last couple of days has cleared out, and we're looking for good weather here at uh, Kennedy. There was some uh, formation of stratocumulus clouds offshore, but uh, we do anticipate that those will remain offshore. Cloud cover this morning is expected at launch time to be uh, 2,500 scattered, 25,000 scattered. Visibility 7 miles and better. Winds uh, northerly at about 10 knots. Maximum winds, uh, oh, about 40,000 feet at 105 knots. And preliminary indications are that if we were to have to make a return to landing site today, a return to launch site, rather, the uh, approach would be to runway 33 from the south to the north. That report as of uh, 3.35 a.m. this morning, just as we came out of the T-minus three-hour hold, the uh, radar uh, showing no uh, areas of uh, precipitation. Very clear over the Kennedy Space Center this morning. Those conditions expected to prevail through our launch window. Overseas at uh, Dakar, we have haze and uh, poor visibility conditions this morning uh, with a forecast for only minor improvement. Uh, visibility was reported earlier at uh, about 3.35 this morning to only be about uh, one and a quarter mile and uh, some possibility for improvement in that. But we do have good conditions at Marone, uh, the alternate transatlantic site. Cloud cover at Marone is uh, predicted to be uh, just about what it is here, 2,000 scattered and 25,000 scattered. Visibility better than seven miles, no weather in the area, no uh, adverse weather, light winds about six knots. Weather likewise at the uh, abort once around contingency landing sites, Edwards and Northrop Strip, uh, look acceptable for launch. So weather should be no uh, substantial factor in this morning's launch. We're looking for good conditions. No technical problems uh, aboard the shuttle at this time or here in the firing room at the uh, Launch Control Center. We're at T-minus one hour, 41 minutes, 33 seconds and counting. This is Shuttle Launch Control. Houston, air to ground two voice check. Boot, how do you read me? Over 
Alpha, Roger, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Charlie? Roger, loud and clear again, Fred. Roger. Configure for an air-to-air -air voice check. Columbia Houston on air-to-air. -air. How do you read me, Hoot? Hello, Fred. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Charlie? Read you great, Fred. Roger. Uh, Columbia Houston, configure a SIMO voice check. Columbia Houston, SIMO voice check. Who? How do you read? Loud and clear, Fred. Loud and clear. Charlie? Loud and clear, Fred. Roger. Pinky? Hey, loud and clear, Colonel Morning. Steve? Loud and clear, SIMO, Fred. Roger. Loud and clear. Franklin? Loud and clear, Fred. Roger. Bob? Loud and clear, Fred. Roger. Bill? Loud and clear. Uh, Charlie, on your uh, bucket profile, we'll use the nominal throw of the nominal throttle profile. Okay, we copy that. That's great. Roger. OTC. This is Houston Capcom. Air to ground voice checks are complete. I copy that, Houston. Thank you. One hour, 35 minutes, and counting. Uh, orbiter test conductor Don Weinberg has just given a go to the pad leader to uh, close orbiter Columbia's hatch as soon as uh, astronaut support person Bill Shepard has uh, left the cockpit. Uh, that should be shortly, uh, in as much as the crew has just completed their SIMO uh, voice checks with uh, Mission Control Houston. Those all went very well, and uh, Don Weinberg, the uh, orbiter test conductor, gave uh, Bill Shepard a go to uh, depart the cockpit. During his exchange of uh, voice checks with the uh, members of the crew, uh, payload specialist uh, Bill Nelson said to Don Weinberg, uh, this is getting to be quite an exercise, and the orbiter test conductor Weinberg said back, uh, quote, I think we have a winner today, or this morning. I think we have a winner this morning. And indeed, uh, it looks so from the weather standpoint, uh, everything very good here at Kennedy Space Center as far as weather is concerned. Looking good as well overseas at Marone and at the uh, abort once around contingency sites. Orbiter Columbia's hatch being closed at this time. Special plugs of insulating tile material will be screwed into place. At the uh, shuttle landing facility here at Kennedy Space Center, the convoy that would support the shuttle orbiter if it had to return to Kennedy Space Center in an emergency is now being positioned. The uh, convoy is made up of a number of vehicles, which include a purge truck, which flows conditioned air through the vehicle to ensure there is no buildup of toxic vapors, a cooling vehicle, with, which uh, provides Freon through the orbiter's Freon coolant loops for rejecting heat and a special mobile white room truck which is used by the crew to climb out of the orbiter after landing. Personnel wearing special self-contained breathing suits called scape suits would be the first convoy personnel on the scene as they uh, sniffed around the vehicle to make sure that there were no large deposits of hazardous fumes in the vicinity of the vehicle. Continuing to go smoothly here at Kennedy as we approach this uh, launch attempt for 61C. Our launch window is uh, the same uh, basically as it has been on the past uh, several attempts. That window extending from 6.55 to 9.33. All is on schedule at this point for an on-time liftoff at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time at minus one hour, 31 minutes, 36 seconds and counting. This is shuttle launch control.
This is Shuttle Launch Control. We're at T minus one hour, nine minutes, and counting. The uh, White Room crew has uh, cleared the White Room at this time, uh, having just reported uh, a few moments ago to Orbiter uh, Test Conductor Don Weinberg and Lockheed Test Director Jim Toe uh, that their tasks were completed. Uh, pad Leader was uh, reporting the White Room closed, and they have now departed the area and will shortly be leaving the pad en route uh, to the A-11 roadblock. All continuing to go very smoothly with this countdown. Uh, weather looking very good here at Kennedy Space Center and, uh, and overseas at Marone. Uh, not uh, too great at Dakar. Visibility a problem there again today. Uh, we need only one of the two sites to be good, and at this point it would look like we're heading towards uh, Marone as our uh, selected uh, transatlantic abort site for the day. Weather conditions okay at the uh, abort once around sites of uh, Edwards Air Force Base in White Sands. No technical problems at this time, which are threatening our proceeding on to our uh, launch this morning. Scheduled uh, T0 remains 6.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The launch window uh, is a long one, extends to 9.33 a.m. There are at least two periods reported uh, thus far as uh, blackout times during that launch window during which we could not lift off. Uh, those are due to uh, collision avoidance requirements. I uh, want to avoid any uh, possibility of uh, veering too close to the uh, orbiting Soviet Soyuz space station. Those times during which we could not launch as a result of that collision avoidance requirement would be uh, 7.28.50 to 7.30.40. Once again, the first time there is 7.28 and 50 to 7.30.40. And then secondly, uh, 9.08. To 9, 10, and 20 seconds. Repeating 9:08 and 5 seconds to 9, 10, and 20 seconds. Unlikely those cola times will present any problems to us this morning. Uh, it's simply periods we uh, could not launch if we have to uh, go into our launch window. All indications are we'll be go for a liftoff right on time at 6.55. No problems at this time. We're at T-minus one hour, six minutes, 14 seconds and counting. This is shuttle launch control. Sand counting. Everything continuing to go quite smoothly here this morning with this countdown. At the present time, uh, this is Charlie Stevenson, leader of the ICE Debris Inspection Team, is giving his report to personnel here in the firing room. Uh, thus far, uh, no problems being reported by uh, Charlie Stevenson. A uh, fairly nominal uh, report uh, concerning the amount of frost and ice uh, formation on the orbiter external tank and uh, areas around the engines. Weather continues to look here at good here at Kennedy Space Center and uh, overseas at Marone. Uh, no problems have been uh, developing in regards to the space shuttle vehicle itself that would uh, tend to threaten us from proceeding on to an on-time liftoff at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. All personnel except for the 61C crew have cleared the launch pad at this time. Orbiter hatch is closed.
Space Shuttle Columbia once again poised for launch on this fifth attempt uh, for Mission 61C, all looking very good this time. We're at T-minus 56 minutes, 34 seconds and counting. This is Shuttle Launch Control. Seven minutes and counting. And just a very few minutes now, we should begin the uh, terminal count range safety uh, eastern test range closed loop test. That test verifies that the shuttle's range safety receiver responds correctly to commands sent from ground support equipment located in the mobile launcher platform using the actual flight code. Inhibits have been placed in the system to prevent inadvertent firing of the range safety devices during this test. Once the check is completed, the range safety carrier will be turned back on and the uh, safe and arm device will be configured to the safe position. Yeah, just a few minutes ago, uh, Launch Director Gene Thomas exchanged some uh, lighthearted banter with uh, Mission Commander Hoot Gibson about uh, Steve Hawley's Groucho Marx disguise. Uh, Hoot, uh, saying uh, to Gene Thomas that it was an attempt to fool Columbia about who was getting aboard today. Launch Director Thomas telling uh, Hoot Gibson that the uh, it was a better view out the window today, and uh, Gibson replying that a view out of a submarine would have been better the other day. All continuing to go very well here with this countdown to... Uh, Launch of Mission 61C. Weather looking good today. Uh, no problems on the vehicle. It would threaten an on-time liftoff at 6.55. We're at minus 45 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. This is Shuttle Launch Control. minutes and counting, all continuing to go quite smoothly with this morning's launch countdown leading up to uh, liftoff of the orbiter Columbia. That liftoff set to come at 6.55 Eastern Standard Time. Less than one hour from now, all indications are that we're going to make that right on time. There's uh, no problems with the launch vehicle that are threatening us at this, at this point. And, uh, Certainly weather today looks uh, a whole lot better than it has uh, earlier in the week. A pre-sequencing of the ground launch sequencer computer program has started. Activation of the S-band communication system to the high power mode has also been completed. And the launch and recovery director, uh, Chuck Hinchel, has verified that the shuttle landing strip has been cleared and is being controlled for a return to launch site abort. Shortly now, Commander Gibson will be performing a test of the transfer capability between the primary ascent computer redundant set and the uh, single backup flight system computer. That's a check between the four uh, general purpose computers that make up the redundant set and the single general purpose backup system. That test verifies that critical guidance data can be transferred from the redundant set of four simultaneously operating GPCs to the single backup computer and that the computers operate in sync. Throughout the countdown, the computers talk back and forth to one another, assuring each other that everything is fine and working properly. Uh, this is so that in the event the four primary computers shut down during the ascent, the single backup flight computer can take over and the flight would continue uninterrupted.
minutes and counting just three minutes away now from entering one of the two final built-in holes at the T-minus 20-minute mark. That one will be a duration of uh, 10 minutes, all continuing to go very well here in the uh, launch control centers, firing room one and out at pad 39A, uh, tracking no significant problems whatsoever, uh, nothing that would uh, threaten us from proceeding on to an on-time liftoff at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning. Weather is looking very good here at Kennedy Space Center and uh, overseas uh, at Marone. Weather forecasters at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station at the present time providing uh, Launch Director Gene Thomas with a uh, briefing. for Launch Director Gene Thomas. No significant change being reported by the Cape weather forecasters. Just 30 seconds away now from entering the hole at T-minus 20 minutes. Uh, Houston flight agreeing with uh, launch managers here at Kennedy Space Center that everything looks real good today. Marone is uh, going to be our transatlantic abort site selected for today. Countdown clock is holding at T-minus 20 minutes. We've entered a 10-minute built-in hold at the T-minus 20-minute mark. I'd like to give a special greeting this morning to our uh, guests that are on center at uh, our viewing sites, the uh, NASA Causeway, the Saturn Viewing Site, and the Static Test Road. I want to thank everybody for coming out on this Sunday morning, some of which have been out here some uh, seven previous times. I'll make that uh, four previous times for the attempts that we've had on launching uh, Orbiter Columbia. For those that have been out on the previous mornings when we've gotten within uh, just a few minutes, uh, that's on those four previous occasions, uh, we've gotten down to at least T-minus nine minutes and uh, have had to go away somewhat disappointed. Uh, we'll tell you this morning that everything looks real good. The weather is uh, cooperating with us both here and overseas. Everything is looking real good aboard the uh, Orbiter Columbia and the ship. And we have every expectation that uh, when you leave this morning, it will be after having watched the Orbiter Columbia launch from Pad 39A and make its uh, ascent into orbit. This is the seventh flight for Orbiter Columbia. The uh, ship pioneered the use of reusable wing spacecraft with the first launch of uh, the space shuttle in April of 1981. Since that time, the shuttle fleet has flown a total of 23 missions. Columbia went on to be reused for the second, third, fourth, and fifth shuttle flights and the first Space Lab mission, STS-9. Loud and clear. Pinky. Loud and clear, Colonel Larry. Roger. Steve. Loud and clear, Fred. Loud and clear. Franklin. Roger, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Bob. Loud and clear, Fred. Loud and clear. Bill. Good morning, Fred. Loud and clear. Good morning, Bill. I have an update for the altimeter at Edwards. The new altimeter voice is checks, three uh, zero. Being wrapped up now between the 61C crew and Mission Control Houston. 
This is our fifth launch and attempt hooked, uh, for 61C. Our first try on December 19th there. was abruptly halted and at T-14 seconds when our ground computer Long detected an apparent problem with one of the booster hydraulic power units. We came back after the holidays targeting and liftoff for January 6th and got down to the T-31 second mark on that date when a uh, ground side liquid oxygen valve closed sluggishly and forced another hold at T-31 seconds. Our launch window expired before we could recycle and get off another try on that date. This past Tuesday, we had unacceptable weather conditions at our transatlantic abort sites of Dakar and Marone, and we decided to call it a day at T-9 minutes. We came back on Friday and uh, had unacceptable weather conditions here at the Kennedy Space Center and had to uh, call it quits. We're back here this morning at uh, T minus 20 minutes and holding and everything looking very good, very promising for a liftoff today. That liftoff once again uh, targeted for 6.55 a.m. Lockheed Test Director Jim Toe is uh, briefing the launch team at this time on the procedures to be followed in uh, calling a halt to the countdown if necessary. Basically, from now until T minus 31 seconds, any of the console operators can ask that the uh, countdown be held if they see a problem. From now until T minus 5 minutes, we could hold the countdown for the duration of the window. From uh, T minus 5 minutes, which is after we start the auxiliary power units and start the liquid oxygen drain back uh, on down to 31 seconds, we could only hold for a maximum of 7 minutes. Any problem after T minus 5 that takes longer than 7 minutes to resolve would result in a scrub for the day. Any unexplained hold after or unplanned hold after T minus 31 seconds would result in an automatic cutoff of the countdown. We're at T minus 20 minutes and holding. This is shuttle launch control. Time limit of seven minutes. And, uh, okay, I have no further information. Are there any questions on the uh, briefing? This is shuttle launch control, just moments away from resuming the count. Countdown clock is counting. We're at minus 19 minutes, 56 seconds and counting. Now that we've come out of this hold, Columbia's onboard computers will be transitioning into the terminal countdown configuration, and we'll be dumping the computer memory of one of the four primary computers so that we can look at, uh, look at it and make sure the Ops 101 program has been stored properly and with no unexpected result. Purge of the three fuel cells is now underway, and the data processing engineer uh, is confirming the onboard computers are in the process of making the transition to the terminal countdown configuration, uh, or should be announcing that confirmation shortly. T-minus 19 minutes and counting. Orbiter test conductor Don Weinberg asking the uh, crew to take uh, take the bring the backup system backup flight system to the run position and prepare to put that in the same Ops 101 terminal countdown configuration as the uh, four redundant computers. have one uh, built-in hold remaining in this count that comes at T-minus nine minutes for a duration of 10 minutes. The T-minus nine minute mark. Commander Gibson reporting back to the firing room that the transition Ops 101 is complete.
Barclay, Director of Payload Operations here at the Kennedy Space Center, has just reported that all payloads aboard Orbiter Columbia are go, having uh, polled all the customers on this flight. Minus 15 minutes, uh, 50 seconds in counting. Green and reaction control system propellant tanks are being configured to the launch position. The uh, orbiter test conductor uh, just asked pilot uh, uh, Bolton to report quantities of the RCS propellant tank. Uh, we'll be asking him to report those quantities as we come up on the T-minus 15 minute mark. Bolton uh, just reported uh, he's in the process of performing the main system helium reconfiguration. Bolden reporting those RCS quantities, uh, as you just heard, to Orbiter Test Conductor Don Weinberg. The uh, propellant quantities in the uh, forward, left, and right uh, reaction control system propellant tanks. We're at minus 14 minutes, 25 seconds, and counting. All continuing to go smoothly. We'll be counting down to T-minus 9 minutes and expect to remain in a 10-minute hold, the uh, normal duration of that hold. Less than 25 minutes away now from the launch of Columbia on mission 61C. Well, we have no weather woes, no technical troubles, all is go for 6.55 Eastern Standard Time this morning, counting down to a hold at T-9. Final built-in hold at T-minus okay. nine minutes. Okay. The countdown clock will hold at T-minus nine minutes. Lockheed Test Director Jim Toe reminding the uh, launch team that the okay. countdown clock will hold when we reach T-minus nine minutes. Okay, copy that. Thank you. All indications this morning are we'll uh, resume our count right on time and proceed on down to liftoff at 655. LTD flight. Yes, sir, LTD, we have an update uh, to this speed break and winds for RTLS would like to pass. Negative, I'm on 212. Go ahead, you your update. Columbia, Houston. Go ahead, uh, Houston. Roger Hood, I have an update for your KSC RTLS winds and speed break setting. Okay, sir, ready to copy. Roger, the uh, forecast winds are 340 at 6 knots, and the speed brakes at 3,000 feet should be 28%. Okay, sir, we copy that. Uh, Mission Control Houston giving the uh, flight crew some information, updated information they need to know in the event they have to come back to Kennedy with a return to uh, launch site abort. Less than half a minute away now from entering the hold at T-minus 9. Shuttle, uh, shuttle project engineer Chris Ferry reporting just a few moments ago, no, uh, no problems being tracked back at the integration console. minutes. Just 60 seconds away now from entering that uh, built-in hole at T-minus nine minutes. That's the launch vehicle is go. Onboard computer programs have been examined and verified to be the proper ones. 
All aero surfaces and actuators that will steer the vehicle through powered flight are in the proper configuration for applying hydraulic power, uh, pressure. And the uh, flight crew has completed all their cabin leak checks and communication checks with the launch team and with flight controllers at Mission Control Houston. Coming up on the team assignment hold, four, three, two, one. Countdown clock is holding. We're at T-minus nine minutes and holding. This will be a 10-minute hold, extending until uh, such time as we can pick up the count and proceed on to a uh, liftoff at 6.55 a.m. Yeah. When, we when we resume the countdown, the ground launch sequencer will be in control. The master computer program will... Uh, issue commands to perform the final critical task required to put the vehicle in the final launch configuration. It will also monitor as many as 1,000 different measurements during the final nine minutes to make sure that they uh, do not fall out of predetermined limits. All personnel in Fire Room 1 have now switched over to the same communications channel and will stay on that channel from now through liftoff. We'll be going to uh, the Johnson Space Center, Houston, uh, for a status report on uh, mission control. At T minus nine minutes in holding, this is shuttle launch control. This is mission control, Houston. Flight control of mission 61C transfers to this facility at the instant of tower clear. We look for some uh, early and critical calls during the ascent phase, the first of which occurs at seven seconds when we initiate the roll program, putting the ship on the proper, uh, in the proper attitude for its uh, flight down the 28.5 uh, degree inclination. Uh, at uh, 56 seconds, we throttle down in two steps, uh, first to 85%, uh, then to 67%. Those settings are a little higher than we've done in the past. An ascent uh, wing pressure distribution will be measured for the first time using trans, uh, transducers located in the top and bottom of the wings. The actual load on the wings will be uh, calculated to determine if more performance can be gained from the orbiter. Uh, the next call we listened for occurs at approximately two minutes into the flight when the crew calls PC less than 50. That is a call uh, indicating uh, chamber pressure and the uh, solid rocket booster thrust chambers uh, is less than 50 PSI, which is a precursor to SRB separation. Separation occurs at uh, two minutes, six seconds. Uh, subsequent calls will advise the crew of their status uh, for a number of abort modes, uh, depending on a variety of uh, possible scenarios. The uh, main engines aboard the ship. Uh, main engine number one, the center engine, has flown four times previously. Engines numbers two and three, the left and right engines, have flown five times each. Uh, despite the delays, this would still be the youngest space shuttle crew ever launched based on average age. And uh, Hoot Gibson would be the first uh, shuttle mission commander under the age of 40. Uh, and at this point, it appears, and of course, we hope that uh, no further delays uh, would occur, which might jeopardize that milestone. Flight director is Gary Cohen, veteran of numerous uh, ascent uh, phases, and Capcom is astronaut Fred Gregory. At T minus nine minutes and holding, this is Mission Control Houston.
minutes away now uh, from uh, resuming the countdown. Uh, that countdown uh, clock should start ticking again at 6.46. Uh, we'll be on for a 6.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time liftoff. Launch Director Gene Thomas saying a few words to the uh, 61C flight crew, uh, expressing to Commander Hoot Gibson uh, the following. Thomas said, quote, It's said that if we wait for good things, they'll come along. We think today is the day. Indeed, uh, all looks very good at this time that uh, we have the... Uh, we have the Orbiter Columbia ready. We have uh, good weather conditions both here at Kennedy Space Center and overseas at Marone. Aboard Columbia is the RCA SATCOM communication satellite that's scheduled to be deployed from the Columbia uh, later today. Also aboard is the Material Science Lab, another package of experiments that's known as the Hitchhiker 1 payload, an RCA infrared camera that will be used for Earth studies and evaluation of the shuttle cargo bay environment and a group of 13 getaway special canisters, which are small self-contained payloads sponsored and funded by a variety of organizations. Stored in the Columbia's mid-deck are additional experiments to study Halley's Comet and perform research on the effects of spaceflight on stored blood. NASA test director Frank Merlino has completed a poll of the various launch conductors and test conductors, including those responsible for the vehicle, the spacecraft, the uh, range, uh, MILA, and mission control, and has verified we will, we will be ready to come out of the hold at T minus nine minutes. From my resuming account, There are several major milestones remaining between now and launch as we come out of the hold. The ground launch sequencer, which is the master computer program running in the integration console located here in Fire Room 1, will take over command of the remaining events as well as monitor the response and status of other vehicle systems. At T minus 7 minutes 30 seconds, we'll see the orbiter access arm being retracted, and at T minus 5 minutes, Pilot Bolden will throw cockpit switches that start up the auxiliary power units. We will, we will terminate liquid oxygen fill and drain back at, uh, start drain back at T minus four minutes, 55 seconds, which conditions the engines for launch and provides the proper amount of oxygen propellant inside the external tank for flight. At T minus four minutes, the final purge of the shuttle main engines will be performed. We'll start a gimbal check of the aero surfaces at T minus 3 minutes 55 seconds, and the orbiter will go on internal power at T minus 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Less than one minute away now from picking up the count. At T minus 31 seconds, the ground launch sequencer will issue a go to Columbia's onboard computers to start their automatic sequence. The final command from the ground computers will come at T minus 10 seconds when the ground uh, launch sequencer gives a go for main engine start. Engine start should occur at T minus 6.6 .6 seconds. The uh, just got word from the uh, superintendent of range operations that we have a final clear to launch. Less than 30 seconds away now from resuming the count. Once again, engine start will occur at T minus 6.6 6 seconds and will be at 90% thrust at T minus 3. SRB ignition will occur at T0 with tower clear approximately 7 seconds later, at which time Mission Control in Houston will take over control of the shuttle vehicle and the mission. We have resumed the count. We're at uh, T minus 8 minutes 55 seconds and counting. The uh, ground launch sequencer in charge now. Down clock now at minus eight minutes, 20 seconds, all continuing to proceed very smoothly. 
Looking for an on-time liftoff of the orbiter Columbia at 6.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Flight OTC, uh, proceed with the transmission of the uh, stored program command. That's in work, OTC. Orbiter test conductor Don Weinberg requesting that Houston send the stored program commands, which are the final update on antenna management based on liftoff time. And that sets the system which makes the orbiter compatible with the uh, downrange tracking stations. We're coming up on the T minus 7 minute 30 second mark and the uh, retraction of the orbiter access arm. T minus 7 minutes 30 seconds. And we have a go for a retraction of the crew access arm. That's the uh, access arm at the 195 foot level. It's being moved out of the way at this time. The arm could be put back in place within about 15 or 20 seconds if an emergency arises and the crew must evacuate the pad. Everything continuing to go very well here. And, uh, Countdown clock at T minus six uh, minutes, uh, 17 uh, seconds uh, and counting. Uh, Orbiter test conductor Don Weinberg is giving pilot Bolden the go to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start. He'll be configuring switches in the cockpit to put the APUs in the ready to start configuration. Those APUs will be activated at T minus five minutes. Flight OTC, uh, transmit DSM 1500. That's in work. OTC PLT, APU pre starts complete. As expected, uh, one has a great talk back, the other two are operable. Copy that. Thank you, sir. Minus uh, five minutes, 30 seconds in county. Flight recorders ought to be uh, started at this point. They'll be collecting measurements of shuttle systems performance during the flight and will be played back after the vehicle is in orbit. Coming up on the go for APU start. TLS go for orbiter APU start. And the ground launch sequencer has given us a go for APU start. Pilot Bolin now flipping the three remaining switches in the cockpit to start the three auxiliary power units. APU activation uh, will be reported complete shortly. And that'll limit our hold, uh, unplanned hold capability to seven minutes. Minus four minutes, 27 seconds in counting. SRB and external tank safe and armed devices have been armed. APU start complete, three good systems. APU start reported complete and with three good systems. Coming up on the uh, T minus four minute mark. Mark, we're at T minus four minutes and counting. And Columbia, time to uh, close the visors. Columbia's crews being instructed to close their visors at this time. Final purge sequence of the main engines is underway. T minus three minutes, 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. The vehicle is now on internal power, running off its onboard fuel cells fed by ground reactants through the T zero umbilical.
Gimbal checks. The orbiter main engines now underway. All three engines in a pre-programmed movement to uh, verify they will be ready for flight. T-minus two minutes, 55 seconds. External tank, liquid oxygen pressurization has started. And purging of the shuttle main engines has been terminated. The uh, gaseous oxygen vent hood should be uh, retracted at this point. And that retraction starting at this time. T minus two minutes, 20 seconds and counting. Orbiter test conductor Don Weinberg uh, having just asked pilot Bolton to clear the caution warning memory system. Coming up on the two minute mark. Mark, we're at T minus two minutes and counting. And liquid hydrogen replenish has been terminated, and LH2 pressurization of flight levels is underway at this time. The vehicle is now isolated from ground loading equipment. Minus one minute, 42 seconds and counting. At T minus one minute, the ground launch sequencer will verify that the shuttle main engines are ready to start. Just one minute, 26 seconds away now from the uh, launch of Mission 61C should come right on time at 6.55. T-minus one minute and counting. Sound suppression water system is now armed. T-minus 50 seconds and counting. Coming up on T-minus 31 seconds and a go for auto sequence start. TLS go for auto sequence start. We have a ground launch sequencer go for auto sequence start. Columbia's general purpose computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions. T minus 20 seconds. Everything is go. The orbiter's onboard computers have armed the SRB ignition hold down post and T0 umbilical. T minus 12 seconds. T minus 10. Go for engine start. T minus 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition and we have liftoff. Liftoff of Columbia in mission 61C and the shuttle has cleared the tower. Columbia. Crew in the ground acknowledging the roll program with good roll, 73 degrees, put the ship on the proper attitude for the flight downrange with wings level and astronauts heads down. Uh, standing by now to throttle down, all three main engines running smoothly at 104% of rated thrust.
Main engines continue to look great. Two minutes into the flight, velocity 5,500 feet per second, yeah. altitude. Yeah, we got DC less than 50. Roger. Uh, that call precursor to solid rocket separation, which now occurring and occurs nominally. Uh, that call and that event right on time at uh, two minutes, six seconds. Guidance now conversion. We'll stand by now for the uh, flight dynamics officer assessment of... Uh, Houston, performance nominal. And that call as a result of the flight dynamics officer assessment of uh, SRB performance, which was as predicted. At uh, 2 minutes 45 seconds into the flight, velocity 6,500 feet per second. Uh, altitude uh, 36 miles. Houston, Columbia, we've got a leak annunciation on F1 and F3. Roger, we copied. Distance downrange 70 miles, altitude 40 miles, velocity 7,000 feet per second. Uh, three minutes, 11 seconds into the mission. Columbia Houston, two We're now to ability. Roger, two engine tail. Uh, mission control, this is a uh, period of overlap where we have two abort capabilities available. Uh, should one main engine shut down, we can either uh, return to launch site or make the transatlantic abort uh, site at Marone. The TAL would be the preferred. Uh, Houston, Columbia, Fred, we've gone back open on that, uh, on that A rig on the right engine. and uh, we didn't really like the rig press on the B, uh, so we're going to leave them both open, and it uh, looks like maybe we just had a momentary high usage on that guy. Columbia Houston, we concur. Columbia Houston, negative return. Roger, negative return. Uh, if Columbia will continue to fly forward, that call uh, indicating we no longer have a return launch site uh, capability. The uh, discussion by Mission Commander Hood Gibson of a uh, uh, pressure system uh, that uh, um, forces propellants through the main engines. At, uh, Four minutes, 30 seconds, mission elapsed time, velocity uh, approaching 10,000 feet per second, altitude uh, 54 nautical miles. Uh, Columbia now in space, not yet in orbit. Columbia Houston, press D'Amico. Roger, press D'Amico. Uh, that call on time, uh, advising the crew to uh, continue to fly forward uh, to main engine cutoff should one main engine fail to operate. All main engines continue to operate uh, perfectly flawlessly at 104% of rated thrust, exactly as programmed. Uh, APU pressure and speeds continue to look good. Uh, fuel cell performance is uh, also good. Uh, velocity 11,400 feet per second, uh, altitude 57 nautical miles, distance downrange. 240. Main engine cutoff would occur at uh, 8 plus 30, uh, roughly three minutes from now, and main engine performance continues to be very good. Velocity 12,500 feet per second, altitude uh, 58 nautical miles, distance downrange 276 nautical miles. Standing by for a call for a single engine transatlantic abort capability to the uh, TAL site. We're using the secondary site this morning at Marone, Spain. Mission lapse time is now six minutes even. Officer now advises Flight Director Gary Cohen, main engine, main engine cutoff will be at 8 plus 22, 8, 20, 8 minutes 22 seconds into the flight. Mission left. Columbia Houston, single engine press D'Amico. Uh, that call on time at uh, that call on time at 6 minutes 30 seconds into the mission, uh, advising the crew that should two main engines fail, we could uh, make Marone on uh, one remaining good engine uh, at 109% uh, of thrust. Uh, again, main engine performance continues right on the mark at 104% of rated thrust. 
ship's on course and on time, all systems performing smoothly. Seven minutes uh, into the mission now, a minute 20 seconds remaining in the powered portion of this flight. Velocity 18,500 feet per second, uh, altitude 58.5 nautical miles, distance downrange 490. minute remaining until main engine cutoff, uh, main engine performance still flawless. The throttling down uh, momentarily to uh, maintain 3G load limits, uh, that throttle down occurring now. At uh, eight minutes into the flight, we should be uh, at uh, 23,000 feet per second velocity, and it looks like we're going to be right on that mark. All main engines now at 90% of rated thrust, running very smoothly. Uh, about 20 seconds, 22 seconds remaining until main engine cutoff. Uh, right on the mark at uh, 23K at uh, 8 minutes. Velocity, uh, 24,000, 3, 25,000, uh, 24,500 now. Uh, Altitude uh, 59 miles, downrange distance uh, 700 miles. And standing by for a Miko call now. Houston, Columbia, we got a good Miko showing on speed 25660. Roger, we copied and welcome to space, rookies. And Fido advises nominal Miko. Right on time at uh, 8.22 into the flight. Uh, Columbia now back in space and in orbit after a sabbatical of more than two years. And the crew should be uh, performing ET separation. Columbia Houston, Hoot. Nominal targets for Ohms 1 and APUs shut down on time. Okay, Fred, copy normal targets. Uh, shut down APUs on time. Roger. Uh, well, Columbia shows she uh, hasn't forgotten how to uh, get into space with a nominal ascent phase. All engines and systems performance was uh, right on the mark during that phase. And uh, we're expecting nominal targets for the Ohms 1 burn. Uh, that burn uh, would occur at uh, 10 plus 30. Uh, mission lapse time now 9.45, um, Ohm's one of a uh, burn of a two-engine burn of two minutes, 52 seconds, producing a delta V of uh, change in velocity of uh, 271 feet per second, uh, producing an orbit of 175 by 54. Ohm's two would circularize that orbit. Uh, Ohm's two targets would nominally be uh, 42 minutes, 43 seconds. And we show the ship now going to attitude uh, for Ohms 1 ignition. Uh, Ohms 1 burn in uh, roughly 10, 15 seconds from now. And we'll get data and see that burn here in the control center on the instrumentation. And we see the burn in progress. Roger, we copied. says the uh, burn looks good at this point. Uh, this burn again, a duration of taking data through the teeter system, the uh, booster systems officer advising that uh, we show a good purge of remaining uh, propellants in the uh, SSME system uh, being purged out of the uh, lines. Uh, that purge in progress, the uh, Ohms 1 burn still in progress.
Columbia, Houston, with you through Teeters. Okay, Fred, we got your light clear on Teeters. Burn's going nicely. Roger. Control, we show about a half a minute remaining for this home spring. Control. We also show main engine stowed nominally, uh, three minutes 30, 13 minutes 35 seconds into 61C, everything going very smoothly. We're 32 minutes away from the Ohms 2 burn, uh, which would occur at a mission elapsed time of uh, 42 minutes 43 seconds. Mission control, we're about a half an hour away from that OMS 2, which would circularize orbit at 175 nautical. Columbia, Houston. Houston, Columbia, go ahead. Roger, this is an info call only on your forward RCS jets. The F1F, we suspect, was a water... Funny data because of uh, water evaporation in the thrust chamber and the uh, second indication due to a faulty transducer. We're 27 seconds away from the Ohm's tube burn. Columbia now approaching the coast of Africa.
we now show that the uh, vent doors uh, containing ET umbilicals have been closed and latched.
Columbia, Houston. Houston, Columbia, go ahead. Roger, we see good. Ohm's two targets. Thank you. 